Okay. All right. I'm just going to briefly go over it. <clears throat> uh, just uh, highlight some important things, right? Uh, cosine of an obtuse angle gives you a negative, right? So cosine of 100 is negative 0.17. Um, applying the inverse of cosine to a negative ratio will result in an obtuse angle. So if you went cosine inverse of any negative number, you already realize that that is it's going to give you an obtuse angle. Okay. What about sine? So sine isn't uh, sine isn't that smart. Right? It has nothing to do with sine. But this is, honestly, if you, I could do a week on this, but I'm not. I'm just going to do. I'm just going to give you an overview as to why this is happening. So I, in the video, I fill in, right? We talk about acute angles, all acute, and that both values are always positive, right? But then when we talk about the supplement, so let's say there's a 20 degree angle, the supplement is 160. If you go sine of 160, you get 0 0.3420, which is exactly the same as the counterpart, right? However, if you took the cosine of the obtuse, watch that, the value is exactly the same. But what's different is the sine, right? So cosine knows the difference between obtuse and acute, sine doesn't. So look at the values for sine, they're exactly the same. Uh, for cosine, they're also exactly the same, but they have that negative in front of it. So that's basically one of the most important things I wanted you to catch. And then I included this diagram that was drawn to scale. Okay, I used GeoGebra for this one. And that's why I included all decimals. But basically, if you use the cosine law of this triangle for angle A here, you indeed got 127.21. But if you use the sine law, right, we had a pair here, and you solved it, you got... For that same angle, you got 52.57. You so what sine is doing is like I, I can't give you this one, but I can give you the acute. So if it we us knowing that this is an obtuse uh, angle, we just have to go ahead and subtract the one that we got uh, using sine from 180 and find the supplement. This is really the one we want, and they're slightly off, right? But that's, uh, that's to be expected because of the rounding issue. So I'm not going to talk about the rest. That's all I wanted you to, wanted, what I wanted to highlight today. So let's go and dig in a little deeper. Go to page 35. And not 35, sorry. I'm looking at my old... Uh, 99. Now we need that song, right? 99. Anyways, um, have that ready. I hope that my iPad is cued for this. Um, me one second here okay um, so this is what we're gonna explore guys this is the problem with sign law especially when it's an SSA case I talked about SSA on the video I don't know if you remember if you watch the video SSA is side side angle and one of them being a pair okay so this is the problem with sign law uh, we're always going to make it look like what I call a fishing rod and the string. Okay, that's what we're going to do. And hopefully this cooperates here. Don't let me hang in here. Yeah. Technology. There you go, there you go, it's working. So right now, <clears throat> look at this. This is an SSA triangle, right? Two sides and an angle. Right now, there's no way 
no way you're going to get a triangle out of this. Can you see that? This side is too short to actually close it with the ground. Okay. Um, it's almost like a crane, right? Um, can somebody find the height for me right now? What would be the height of this triangle? Like if you just imagine the slant and 30, what would be the height of that triangle? Can you calculate that for me? I, I don't have my calculator here, but you, you can do it for me and tell me what it is. I actually know. 4.5? Okay. So if I could make this side 4.5, which I'm going to do here, I don't have my pencil, Apple Pencil, but oh, there we go. If that's 4.5, right, that's the height of from the ground to the top, it's 4.5, we know that. So if I make that side 4.5, I have one triangle, correct? What kind of a triangle in particular? It's actually a right triangle because the height is always measured at a 90 with the ground, right? What if I make that side a little bit longer? Now we have a problem. Remember, I, I kind of gave you an overview like a problem when a plane approaches and it looks ahead to two points in the ground versus you being right in the middle. Sign law has a problem. That's, that's why I need to be very specific on the word problem with that. So if this side, if, if the second side is a bit longer than the height, watch this. It, if I make it 4.6, 4.5, one triangle, I don't have my pencil, so this is going to be very tricky. Anyways, 4.7. As soon as I make it a bit longer, there's actually two triangles possible, guys. Two triangles. It's this one with B1, where you close it in like that. Or A, C, and B2. So it's this big one out here. There's two triangles possible. And so that's what we're going to explore. If this side here, if this string is longer than the other side given. So let's say it's uh, 10. When it's longer, then we actually only have one triangle possible. Like you don't need to worry about it. So I made sure that every single question so far, that that string here would have been longer than the side that is already given to you. Okay, I made sure that that worked out every time. So this is a bit of an illustration as to what is going to happen. Um, so you're ready, right? With highlighters and everything. When given a non-right triangle, which is oblique, and we determine that it's an SSA, right? watch this. The ambiguous case only applies to SSA. There it is again, SSA, which is sign law. Cosine law doesn't have this pro problem. Especially if there's no diagram provided. Okay. We we will always draw something like this. And this is just I, I didn't I, I, I heard about this somewhere to make it easier for you. The rod, the fishing rod, and the string, and I like to fish. So it, it's just a win-win. So we always want to force your diagram to look like this. Okay? And uh, so we have our string here. We have this angle will be given, right? So I'm going to highlight that as well. This angle would be given right here. That's the only angle that you will know, right? So you will make sure that the side that goes across from it, in this case, side X, is right up across just like that. And we call that the string or S. And we call the other side rod in this case i call it side b right so now we're going to ask ourselves string is the string greater than or equal to the rod that's the very first question you want to ask the string is your main actor guys String is the uh, the main character here. It's all about the string. If the answer is yes, you're done. Nothing to worry about. We call this one solution, one 
triangle possible. Done. Nothing to worry about. But if the answer is no, you have to dig a little deeper. Okay. If the answer is no, so if the arrow goes down to the no, right? So you're basically saying that the string is less than the rod. That's basically what you're saying here. Uh, pause. Why greater than or equal to? Well, if it's equal to, if this side is the same as that side, what kind of a triangle do we have in our hands? Isosceles, right? So if they're the same or if this is greater, boom, one solution, one triangle, no worries. If the answer is no, meaning that the string is less than the rod, you have to find the height. And in this particular case, height is side B, right? The slanted times sine of angle X. Right, this is the orange angle right there. And then you have three options you can uh, find yourselves in. Trust me, it, it looks overwhelming, but this can be done quite quickly later on. If the string is less than the height, what's going to happen if the string is less than the height? As per the illustration, the string is just swinging back and forth. It's not making contact. So no solution, no triangles basically, that's your conclusion. And let me uh, just focus in on that last part there. So this is what would happen, right? This is your rod, this is this string. And it would just swing back and forth like this, not touching the ground. And this would be the height, right? Remember, at this point, when you get to this level, it's all about height and string, height and string. Because you already ruled out that the string is uh, shorter than the rod, right? If the height... Sorry, string is the main character, so I'm going to always go string is exactly equal to the height. What do you have? One solution. It's a right triangle. And in this particular case, If this is the rod and this is the height, we know that the string is exactly equal to the height. I will just go height is equal to string, okay? In this case, height is equal to string, so there we go, it's a right triangle. It just makes contact once. <laughs> if, however, the string is greater than the height this is where you have two possible scenarios two solutions two triangles you have to contemplate and realize that there could be two scenarios there and it looks like this. One is where if this is the rod and this is the string, right? It would swing in and this is the height right here, which we will just go dashed. So this is triangle one. 
and the other one is where the string swings out like that and the height is inside. This is the rod, this is the string. I don't know if this is going to make it worse, but I'm going to make I'm going to try it. Right? So, this is where it swings in. And you went from here earlier to swinging out and making contact there. So, there are your two triangles possible. But in each of these cases, there's a, actually a very simple justification for to come up with these three. In all three cases, the string was shorter than the rod to begin with. That was our first, our first uh, thing that we had to determine. It was like, hey, the string is shorter than the rod. So next stage. And notice that the string is always the main character. And then to narrow it down to this branch right here, we determined that the string is less than the height. To get down this branch, we determined that the string is exactly equal to the height. And on this last one, the string was greater than the height. This would be the justification. Justification. Right. So you needed to find the height to determine which one of these three camps it's going to fall into. Before you ready for this? Before, I made sure this never happened. I always made sure that every example that you ever came across, the answer would have always been yes. String is larger or longer than the rod. So boom, just one solution. You never face this problem. But now you're going to start seeing this. Um, we're going to do that after we're done here. Um, can I just also mention that this is for acute examples. This angle right here would have been acute. Uh, pause. Time out of time, right? Anyways, so I'm just going to keep going then. Wait, there was a way to get out of class earlier? Right, that's what you're thinking. Um, let's go to page 100. Much easier when it's obtuse. There's only two options. When it's obtuse, it's SSA obtuse, okay? And make an arrow going to this one here is the one I'm talking about, right? What does it say here? Very important. No need to find the height. You get it? You can, but it does, you don't have to. Like it's, it's pointless. All you have to ask yourself is this. If the string is less than or equal to rod, no solution. You're done. If the string is greater than the rod, one solution. So there's either zero or one when it comes to up to scenarios. That's it. That's it. For this one, I'll give you an example right away. Right away. Example. Let's say you have 
angle A is 100, side B is 50, side A is 49. So I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. It's going to be very obvious. I'm going to say, hey, how many solutions are possible? I'm going to ask you that. Justify. First things first, you realize that there's an angle. There's a pair here, right? And one more side. There's a pair. Pair plus a side. That, that tells you right away it's SSA, for sure. And is it acute or obtuse? Obviously, it's obtuse. So I'm just going to tell you, in this case, you just do one of these. The rod and the string, like that. This is 100 degrees. You put the angle there every time. If it's if I'm asking how many solutions, don't hesitate, you put it there. And this angle that you were given is angle A, correct? Which means that side A would have to be over here, that's 49. Which means that the rod, the other side, will go there. Don't close it because we don't know yet. So in this case, it's SSA obtuse. String is less than rod, correct? 49 is less than 50. Therefore, no solution. Just like that. This is the justification. I would always suggest you make a little diagram and then conclude. And the only way to get good at this is practice. Okay. This is the last thing that I need to cover, and then we're done. Uh, trade. Okay. Let's go to the next page here and put this to the test. Page one hundred and one. Okay. Okay, let's go through the, these are all acute, okay? There's no, there's no denying, these are all acute. So I'll make sure I write down acute. And you're like, okay, what's happening here? String, so string, string is what? Less than rod, correct? That's the first observation we make. So if that's the case, we need to compare string and height. So if, if string is less than rod, just by looking at the numbers, you need to now compare string and height, right? So this is the height right here. The string is what? Less than height. Right? So I'm going to say that on the side, just so you understand, uh, 3 is less than 8. And here I said that 3 is less than 5. That is true, right? Therefore, no solution here. These are the ones that I consider like you, you got to do zero work, not even drawing anything like that. You just have to look at the numbers. And I'm going to put R and S like that. Please do that as well. I'm going to put a height there. Remember, you look outside first. Cover up that height for now. Just compare string, your main character string and rod and what would you say here string is less than rod so you got to continue your journey you're not done yet string and height uh, string is still less than height therefore no solution 
I would strongly recommend you have that flow chart somewhere on your study sheet. Try to make it as small as possible. I want you to try these three here by yourselves. If the string is at all longer or equal to the rod, you're done. You don't need to continue to the next step of comparing string and height. Okay, it's one solution, you're done. Okay, so try to figure out how many solutions would there be for these three. Now I'll just do my attempt. Okay. I'm just going to guide you through this. I would always go rod and string. Make sure you differentiate that. If it's not there, you label it. Okay. And then there's my height, height, height. So here, string. Now you can, I'm going to start doing this. Okay. String is less than rod still. So I need to continue my journey and compare string to height. And what do you notice? That they're exactly the same, right? So it's actually a right triangle. You can go one solution, right? That's still okay to say that. But in particular, that would be a right triangle. Next, string is greater than rod, correct? Yippee, you're done. One solution. No, no worries about height there. You're done. Next, string is yeah less than rod. Sorry, I was drawing a blank there. And then I noticed that the string is actually greater than the height. Therefore, two solutions. Two triangles are possible there, if, if that were the case. Okay. We don't know the angle. I, I, know, I know that. We don't know the angle, but I'm giving you the height, so you don't really need the angle because I gave you the height because the angle is only there to allow you to find the height of that triangle, right? What about, uh, I, I threw in some obtuse because I don't have enough examples. The height is irrelevant. Can you please just get rid of it? Height is not needed. Height is not required to figure these out. It doesn't hurt that they're there, but it, it's okay. Now, so in this case, I go rod and string, and I go rod and string. So here, string is slightly bigger than the rod, correct? Therefore, one solution. Here, uh, the string is actually shorter than the rod. Therefore, no solution. Cannot be solved. And if we had the time, this would be a good one to have a scale diagram. You would actually be able to tell that you couldn't. If you drew this to scale, it's not possible. So these are what I call the no work required. Like you're not doing any math, you're just justifying. You, you will never be in that situation. Okay, in each case, follow me please for a couple more and then I'm done. Okay, I'm done. A couple more examples and I'm done. I promise. In each case, determine if it's SSA if so, determine how many solutions are possible. Justify. So there's three things that I want you to do here when it's this scenario. Not what it, what what would you say if it's not SSA? What would you say? Justification. One triangle. Done. You don't have to do string rod. Nothing. If it's SSS, for example, one solution. Right. This is only if it's SSA that you need to worry about. So, uh, there's the angle, oh, you've got a pair, and another side. So this is a pair, plus another side, that tells you that it's SSA. You don't even need to draw this thing. 
If you drew it, you'd definitely find out it's SSA. Okay. All right. And what kind in particular between the acute and the obtuse? Angle is acute, right? So just make that note here. I determined it's SSA. I determined it's acute. So now I can start with my fishing scenario, right? You make your base, you make your rod, and it's going to look like this because it's an acute angle. So this is 37, which is angle A. Sure, you can throw a height in there like this, a dashed one. Um, I'm going to call this side A. It's going to go right here. This is 228.3 feet. And that's what I would call my side S. And you're like, what about side A, Mr. Dixon? I would say stick with rod and string. Otherwise, you're going to start mixing letters up. And then the other side, just make it be over here. Okay, so this is 119.8 feet, which is R. At this point, you should know what I mean with that, right? And then you look at the numbers. And then you say, okay, it's always the string. It's the main character. And what do you notice about those numbers? Oh, string is greater than the rod, correct? Just look at the numbers. That means that one solution. <clears throat> done. You're done. As easy as that. All that work for that, right? But that's the case, right? 220 is bigger than 119, so no worries. You don't have to worry about it. It's going to be one triangle. And if case closed. Next, angle, okay. I've got the side across from it, so that's my pair. And I've got another side. You most definitely know that this is SSA. What kind of angle? Obtuse, right? And I'm picky with this one. Uh, I, I want it to look like an obtuse angle like this. So do your best. This is this would be angle Y. This is 127. And the rest, I don't really care. Just don't close it because we don't know if it's going to close. We would definitely know if this was drawn to scale, but we're not drawing it to scale. So side Y is a cross, which I call string. And the other side, I'm just going to make sure it goes here, which I'm going to call rod. Ready? So I've determined this SSA, it's up to, so I've done my little diagram, and now I'm just going to say string is less than rod, therefore, no triangle, no solution. justification, everything, you kind of go through the emotions. And this is how I do it. Uh, I know that other teachers do it differently. If you take pre-cal 11, they do the same thing. They do sign law, cosine law. They go through the ambiguous case. And um, I find that this is quite effective. So triangle DEF, you've got, okay, side, another side, but I need to know if there's a pair. Okay, there you go. You see that pair? That saves you time from having to draw it and then figuring this out. I've got a pair and another side, so it's SSA for sure. The angle given is acute. Okay, so that means that this is what it's going to look like. I'm going to put the 75 here. That's angle F. And across from F is 9.5 miles, which I call the string. And I'm going to put the 9.7 miles where the rod is. And I'm going to go through the process. String is less than rod. When that is the case, you need to do more work. Find height. Tell yourself that, right? When that is the case, you need to find the height. So we're going to find the height. 
we're going to go 9.7 times sine of 75. It's the only angle there, by the way. And it's the, the side that's touching it, the slanted is touching it, right? So um, you would get 9 point, just round to two decimals, okay? If you round to two decimals and your height is exactly like your string, then it's a right triangle, okay? But in this case, we've done this extra work here. So this is our first step. We have to find the height and now we go back to comparing string and height. And you look at your string, watch up here, right? String is 9.5 compared to 9.37. You wanna do that? Sure, go ahead. Let's, let's write in 9.37 right here. <clears throat> so obviously the string is greater than the height. Okay, 9.5 is greater than the height. Therefore, two, two solutions are possible. So it's a lot, it's a little bit more work when it's a two when when you have to actually find the height it, it takes a little bit extra work for you to do that i'm stopping there so this is what i'm going to assign let me just peek on the previous page i'm going to freeze this if you're copying still yeah i threw in a so I'm just going to say page 103 and page 106. Homework. Page 103 and 106. I'm, po I'm posting that. So there's basically the same, same that we just did here. Um, and that's all I need you to do. Sorry. Page 103, 106. <clears throat> And I'm going to stop with new stuff here. There's the one extra thing that where we actually, you know, when there's two solutions, we actually solve both triangles. I know you know how to use sine law. I know you know how to use cosine law, so I'm not worried about it. But I'm not going to do it for the test. So when we come back, at some point, I might say, hey, let's review trig and let's explore this. Okay? But I'm not going to have... Other than this, this is it for new stuff. So tomorrow I'm reviewing a little bit word problems, getting you ready for the test. That's it. So if you can just wrap your head around page 103, 106, if you can do that by the end of the homework, you're good to go with this section. Okay. Um, and that's it.